Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala, president of Audioholics, and today we are here with Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. And Gene, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, my friend. Awesome. It looks to me like you're gonna literally drop down some knowledge over here on cables. We have tons of cables laying around over here. Yeah, you know, I think it's important uh, for anybody that's building a new home to properly pre-wire their home if they're into doing a home theater room. And I wish that I would have had access to a video like this, you know, seven, eight years ago when I was doing my theater room because I probably would have done a couple of things a little differently. So I'd like to share with you today uh, some of our experiences in pre-wiring a home and hopefully it'll help guide you to make good decisions when you're ready to build a new house and uh, get it set up for home theater. I think the first thing to cover, Gene, is the different types of cables because people think cables are cables. You know, right. The, the, per right. the person that is completely new to home theater has no idea that there are many different types. Oh yeah. And I think uh, that will be a good place to start by covering, you know, what types of cables we have and then how to put everything together, you know. Okay. So basically I got some of the basic cables that you need for home theater. You start with power cables to power your products, um, HDMI to do all your digital HD TV as well as a high definition surround sound. Mm -hmm. Ethernet, everybody knows Ethernet, can't have the internet without it. Data. Data. And we've got over here, we've got balance cables, line level. We got unbalanced line level cables. And then finally we have speaker cables to plug in your speakers. Right, exactly. And this, just to clarify for those that are really new, these are interconnect cables is what these are. Correct, correct. So, you know, in order to get the signals where they need to go in your room, you're gonna to have to kind of think about, first of all, where are you gonna place your stuff? Mm -hmm. Where are you gonna place your AV components? Where are you gonna place your speakers? How are you gonna route your power? How are you gonna route, you know, data? And how are you gonna route video to your projector if you're gonna do a projector? Right. And I think the first thing we wanna talk about is, is doing power for the room. And what I really recommend, especially if you're in a bigger room and you want more amplifier power, mm -hmm. to run dedicated lines to your home theater. In this, in the Audio Hulk Showcase room, we have two dedicated 20 amp lines, 120 volt. You know, I would even have gone more extreme if I had the opportunity to do 220 volt, because one, a couple of our power amps, uh, Emotiva XPR1s, they could run on 220, and that basically gives you more ability to really double up on that power. Yeah. So if you can, you know, at the very minimum, run at least two, maybe three dedicated 20 amp lines, 120 volt. Do at least one of them at 220 volt. Mm -hmm. It can't hurt. The only thing that's going to hurt is your wallet. It might cost you an extra couple hundred bucks. We need more power. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to ever be without power. No, you don't want that. And you know, sure. the other thing, the other thing I would recommend too is um, where you, wherever you're putting the subwoofers in your room, try to make those lines a dedicated line too, because. Unfortunately, in our room, we didn't run a dedicated line for a mm -hmm. sub, and it shares an outlet with some of the lighting. Ah, uh, okay. So if the subs are really pounding and you have the lights on, you can actually see the lights <laughs> you dimming. You can see them dimming, yeah. So of course, get as much power as you can into the room, dedicated, preferably, even for your front, especially if you're running a front projector. Now you could do dedicated power for your front projector, but I even have another option. I think is actually a better option, something I didn't even consider, is to run actual uh, Romex cable from wherever your rack is to your projector because really the most important product in your system to get voltage regulation and get power protection is your projector mm -hmm. and you could put a little line conditioner on the wall or on the ceiling with your project with your projector but you can't do battery backup and you can't do line regulation right. but if you have like a product from Furman or or Panamox that does that in your rack mm -hmm. by running Romex to the projector you could plug it in there and then have it go back to your rack so that would be my recommendation and then the other thing you'd want to do if we're talking about the projector is what we did was we ran conduit mm -hmm. okay we knew where the projector was going to go we calculated the throw distances we ran conduit and we snaked in actually not one but two HDMI cables because if you get one kink in a cable, it could be the end of the game for you. Yeah, for so sure. once they put the drywall up, you can't change it. Yeah. It's always good to have redundancy. Agreed. And you know, HDMI, um, there's a lot of snake oil with any cable. Um, you don't need to go crazy with HDMI, but you, it is important when you're running 30, 40 foot lengths of cables, you could go maybe up to about 50 feet until you have to go to an active solution or until you're considered doing fiber. 
but try to choose try to choose an HDMI cable that's category one or category two rated. Category two preferable because it'll deal with the higher data rates. It'll deal with beyond 1080p if we ever wind up getting that as a format. Mm -hmm. So you know, forget about the strand jumping, the batteries, all that nonsense that you get with some of the esoteric companies. The freezing. The free <laughs> cry cryogenic freezing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You, you want to stick with a cable that is certified either Category 1 or preferably Category 2 because then you know they meet the specifications mm -hmm. for HDMI transmission. Right. So what I did with our projector is I ran a CAT2 cable. I also ran Ethernet because mm -hmm. if you want to do triggering on your projector, it's important to have Ethernet there as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that'll cover that. And then what I did was I ran a, uh, a patch panel behind my AV rack and that's where I terminated all my cables. Whether you're dealing with speaker cables, you're dealing with interconnects, all of that came back to one area. And especially my data cables, I ran two sets of RJ45 uh, Ethernet cables to yeah. my, to my uh, rack, and then all the data from every room of my house runs back to the laundry room where my router is. Mm -hmm. So you want to have one central demarcation point for your data. And I usually you choose a garage or preferably like a laundry room so mm -hmm. you have some air conditioning in there too. Right. So, uh, you know, the other thing too is uh, when you're doing speaker cables, it's important. I always am into really low gauge, low resistance cable. I made the mistake of running 10 gauge to conductor cable. Mm -hmm. Very unmalleable, very hard to work with, very hard to terminate. And it's great from a resistance standpoint, a performance standpoint, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't have redundancy. Yeah. And if you, instead of going with the 10 2, which we have here from Blue Jeans Cable, they make a 14 4 cable, okay? The 14.4 is nice because it has almost the same kind of resistance of 10 gauge. It's equivalent resistance is really 11 gauge, very mm -hmm. close. But now you got four conductors. So if you sometime down the road you want to upgrade to Dolby Atmos and you want to put an Atmos right. speaker with a driver firing up at the ceiling, mm -hmm. well now you can just basically buy an Atmos enabled speaker and then you got that extra pair of cable in there to use it for an Atmos speaker. And if you're not using it for Atmos, you can just tie the, tie the leads together and you have the resistance close to 10 gauge. Brilliant, brilliant. Wow, that's, uh, that's very interesting and very enlightening for those uh, that are starting out because you don't know how many people I come across to in that to them this is really a huge hidden science. They really don't know. Yeah. And then, you know, usually they go to places you know, like, like a place like Walmart. I'm not putting Walmart down, but you know, sometimes you don't have people that really can help you right. choose the right cables. You know, it's like you really need to know what you're doing with this. Yeah, you want the right cables and you want the right locations. Mm -hmm. When you're, for, especially, you want to pre-wire for subwoofers. We never do one subwoofer in any of our theaters. We recommend at least two mm -hmm. for better base distribution. So what you should do is you should have a pre-wire on the side wall, maybe a pre-wire on the back wall. Um, I ran all unbalanced RCA level uh, cable, RG6. Again, this is uh, Blue Jeans, mm -hmm. some of the best um, RG6 on the market. Um, I would have preferred to have run balanced cables because you, you, you have less problems with ground issues and balance just makes a really firm connection, which is what we have here. Right. If you can run balanced cables to your patch panels and run them to um, you know, your locations for your subwoofers, always run extra speaker cables. If you think you're running four surrounds, run double the cable. It's, mm -hmm. Cable's not that expensive. Right. You, you do want to run CL2 um, approved cable that could go behind drywall and it's safe. Um, you know, run a couple of pairs up in the ceiling in case you want to go with Atmos mm -hmm. again. You run two in the front, two in the back of the room. It's always good to have more than less. Absolutely. And you know, again with the HDMI, when you're dealing with short distances of HDMI, the cable doesn't really matter. You know, if it's three or four foot runs to your rack, you could pretty much use any HDMI cable. But when you start getting to two or three meters, you know, we again we go with the category rated cables. Over here, we, we're looking at a mono price cable, a very high quality, very low price for what you get with them. You do not you don't need to spend a hundred dollars a foot for HDMI. I mean, uh, there's a lot of profit in that, so you just got to be careful with the snake oil. Yeah, for sure. And stick with the stuff that you know that works, the stuff that we test, and you'll be good to go. And you know what, Gene? What I'll do is that I'll link up the video that we have on uh, Cable Myth, you know, to go ahead and help people out. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, the, the last thing we want is for somebody that's just getting into this to end up spending, you know, hey, I just spent $100 in this awesome uh, cables over here. You're like, okay. Yeah, you just uh, go scam my friend. Usually it's a lot more than $100 <laughs> for some of these cables. So. Yeah, 
that too, you know, especially the ones that you have to cryogenically freeze, uh, those ones uh, yeah, I mean, will run you a pretty penny. I don't recommend that. <laughs> yeah. Or getting it blessed by a rabbi with co soaked in kosher chicken fat. I just, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, I just, I just don't think you really need to do. I think you need to focus more on location, where you're putting right. your, where you're routing your cables, and to use stuff that you know that works. You know, with coax, you want shielded, uh, double shielded, double foil braided, mm -hmm. RG6, RG59. You know, uh, the, again, the blue jeans is a 18 gauge, so you could do very long runs without having to worry about losses. Um, the same thing with the balance cables. You just want stuff that's well shielded, CL2 approved, stuff that could go behind drywall, and you're good to go. Awesome. Well, thank you, Gene. That's been very enlightening. I'm glad I could help. With that said, I invite you to go ahead and visit audioholics.com where you'll have tons of articles on mist busting, information or articles like this one, tons of reviews for sure. And you can also sign up to our free weekly newsletter that you get at least once a week. And you also get, as a token of our appreciation, our top AV gear guide, which Gene will cover over here what that is. Sure, Hugo. Basically what we do every year is we put together a guide that's based on performance of products and value, or sometimes both. And it gives you good recommendations, whether you're looking for a Blu-ray, you're looking for loudspeakers, cables, you know, every kind of category of product is in there and it's just a good shopping guide for you to use as a reference. Absolutely. Fully printable. You can take it with you to the store and you can go at it. At any rate, thank you so much for taking a look at our video here. If you liked it, click like on the, the button below and also feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, let us know what kind of other videos you would like to see from us and don't be selfish share this information with everybody out there spread the wealth spread the wealth exactly there are many gifts that we give on videos too you know we try we try to be generous <laughs> we try <laughs> at any rate on that note until next time keep, keep listening, listening.